Once you have Jaspersoft Business Intelligence for Amazon Web Services up and running, the next thing you'll want to do is get connected to your data. You'll be able to find all the detailed information that we'll see in this video at this URL here. If you don't already have Jaspersoft up and running, you can go to that same URL but replacing launch instead of connect and, and get details on how to launch it. Okay, let's start with the Amazon AWS Marketplace. Uh, this is where you would originally come to launch Jaspersoft. Since you've already done that, now let's take a look at your software. Uh, you see that I've got two instances running. Let's go look at one of those Jaspersoft instances. Here's the welcome page. I'm going to scroll down and uh, go to the login page. I've already logged in the first time and changed super user's password. Uh, now I'm going to create my first data source. So we go to the create data source wizard. Uh, let's give it a name. The data set that I've got here is uh, it's a database that I created in uh, Amazon Redshift and it's got a US government uh, natality data set, births in the US over the last 40 years. Uh, let's save this data source. I'll put it into a, this uh, data sources folder, but you could save it anywhere. And normally you should use the EC2 instance credentials. The instance should get launched using an IAM role. It'll have these instance credentials and it can find all of your RDS data sources. Now, for some reason you haven't done that, it's also possible to generate AWS credentials and use those to, to be given access to the RDS and Redshift data sources. So in this case, uh, I'm going to create it right on the fly here. Let's say uh, uh, I, for whatever reason, did not use an IAM role when I first launched it. So we'll go through this. What this does is create a new user and give me the secret uh, access key to be able to use that user. Okay, so here in the template, you'll be able to see all of the details so you know exactly what we were running when we ran this template. You'd be free to tweak it if you wanted to. There are no resources yet because the, the job is still running and likewise no outputs. But if we wait for just a moment and then refresh this, we'll see that it's finished creating the user and, uh, and then I'll have my, my access key and my secret key. Okay, there we go. So now let's copy the access key and the secret key and go reuse those over in Jaspersoft. So I'm going to paste in the access key. Uh, let's go back and get the secret key. I'll copy that. And now I'll paste that back into uh, Jaspersoft. Uh, so you can see there's a little bit more work compared with using the EC2 instance credentials. But the end result will be the same. So I can find my data source. Here you can see I've got a bunch of databases running. If I choose a SQL Server database, it's going to use the appropriate driver and URL. If I switch to MySQL or Oracle, it'll likewise use the appropriate URL. It'll find the default database if there is one. I'm going to use Redshift rather than RDS, but it's exactly analogous. I'll put in the username and password. Uh, the Amazon APIs don't have access to that, so that's something that I have to provide myself. So I need to know the username and password, and, and that's it. Now I've created this first data source. The next thing I need to do is create a domain. That's Jaspersoft's metadata layer to provide nice business names on top of the underlying database. So for this domain, uh, I'm going to save it into similar folder structure. I'll put it into a domain folder. And for the data source for the domain, we'll use that data source we created just a few seconds ago. So let's uh, browse out and, and choose this uh, natality data source. And then we'll create the, uh, the definition of the domain here in the domain designer. So I'll choose the schema, the public schema. I've got a few tables. I'm going to choose just one of them for right now. Probably you'll end up choosing lots of tables in your domain, but for now I'm going to just use this first big fact table. So I'll drag this in and say this is what I want to expose to my users, and I'll make just a few changes to show the idea here. I'll give a reasonable human, human readable name for the, the data set itself. Let's save that off, and then um, for just a couple of fields, let me choose like father age, let's give that a, a better name, I'll call that father's age, and I'll give it a description, uh, this is the age of the father when the child was born. And then more importantly, let's set uh, the father's age as a number, so Jaspersoft is going to guess that that is a measure. But really, I, I don't want to treat ages like measures, I don't want to sum up ages, I just want to treat it like a, a field or dimension, so I'll set that. Uh, for the APGAR score, now that's that's a measure of the baby's health, and it is a measure, but in general I would never sum those up, so I want to set the default function to be average. Uh, my user would always be free to override that, but it's uh, it's nice to set them up with appropriate defaults. 
Okay, normally I would set up uh, that sort of thing for all my fields, but now let's go ahead and say I've got this initial version of my metadata layer. Let's build our first analysis view. So I'm gonna uh, browse through here, find that data source, that domain that we just created. We'll choose the one table that's available to me and start building a chart and doing some analysis on this data set. So let's start with the father's age, and I want to see how old are fathers when they're having children. So let's drag in the, uh, the number of babies. The record weight is the technical name of this column. You can see I've got about 150 million records here. Now let's zoom in and take a look at what the distribution is by age. You can see there's that big spike at the end. Uh, there's over 20 million fathers who are 99 years old. And of course that's not true, but that's what the database says. It, it records 99 when there's no father, so I'm going to hide that, or maybe even better, I'll create a filter and just look at certain ages that I care about. So we'll put that filter in. Now, um, well, let's try another measure. Instead of looking at the number of children born, let's see if there's a correlation between the age of the father and the health of the child. So we'll drag in the APGAR score. Uh, this is a little bit hard to see in a bar chart. Uh, I'm going to switch this over to another visualization style to see if it, if it makes more sense in a line chart. Ah, here I get about 50 lines, but with one point each, doesn't make sense. So let's swap that and get one line with 50 points. And here you see there's a, there's a definite trend. Uh, uh, babies get older, baby, as fathers get older, babies are healthier. Let's compare maybe girls versus boys. Uh, it turns out that girls, uh, on average, are, are healthier than boys. Not a lot healthier, but uh, a noticeable amount. They tend to be healthier than the boys. Okay. This is my very initial analysis. Hopefully you'll be inspired to do some analysis on your own data set. And again, you can get connected very quickly and get started.